Hi, everyone. Um, just so, to finalize some of the comments for this reconstruction end, uh, a few things. Um, and I was just noting the U.S. Uh, v. Cruikshank case. It is one example of a few different uh, cases that uh, really challenge the power of the 14th Amendment. Uh, we also see the 15th Amendment being challenged because states will decide uh, that there are other ways that they can deprive individuals of the right to vote, such as literacy tests um, and the grandfather clause. If somebody's grandfather wasn't able to vote, then they're not able to vote. Uh, and of course, because people's grandfathers may have been enslaved, you know, they're not able to vote. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different techniques that states use to try to squash any power that the 14th and the 15th Amendment uh, gave. And this is really significant because there's an opportunity uh, for the courts to actually endorse what the radical uh, Republicans were going for with trying to create greater equal protection under the law. The idea that the law has to um, kind of treat individuals, you know, equally um, the law can't cater to one group, you know, over another. Uh, so there is um, this sense that under uh, the Cruikshank case, for example, um, there is a, um, you know, kind of uh, hope that the 14th Amendment could be used to prosecute individuals who had used murder and intimidation in order to stop black uh, political power. Um, but the courts decide that the 14th Amendment doesn't apply to one group of individuals or one person versus another. Um, they don't necessarily give power through the 14th Amendment to any types of uh, civil rights protection between individuals. It's only um, when the state, so the state can't, um, you know, position itself to stop uh, black Americans, for example, from voting. But if individuals go to do that, the 14th Amendment couldn't be used to prosecute them. And so it uh, marginalizes the impact of the 14th Amendment. What we see as a result of the U.S. v. Cruikshank case is basically um, a much more significant use of violence. Uh, there becomes no political outlet or court outlet uh, to challenge any of the violence. There's no way to stop it because even if the federal government was going to enforce something, um, you know, uh, you know, it, it's not going to um, be upheld uh, in court. So, um, you know, the 14th Amendment, in a sense, gets thrown, you know, under the bridge uh, and won't be um, uh, kind of its full like reinterpretation doesn't happen in the courts until the 1850s and the 18, I'm sorry, the 1950s and the 1960s. Um, the last thing is in 1876, there's a presidential election. Um, Grant no longer is going to have um, really the, the following uh, that he once had. And there becomes a new Republican uh, candidate that is selected by the Republican Party. That's uh, uh, Rutherford B. Hayes. Um, and there's also a Democratic uh, candidate, uh, Sam Tilden. And what happens in this particular election is there's going to be an electoral uh, challenge. Uh, the electoral vote um, has uh, an issue. It's almost tied, and some of the state's counts are disputed. There's a few different states where the counts are disputed. Um, so there's actually um, several weeks without a president, and then there's a bargain that takes place. And the bargain is basically um, Hayes, who is the Republican, will win the presidency. And Republicans are happy about that because they're interested in Hayes taking on some of the challenges in the West. Um, lots of Republicans are not prioritizing Reconstruction, but there's other um, commitments that the Republican Party has, uh, you know, regarding the economy, regarding Western expansion. And so those are the priorities that are starting to uh, be the focus for Hayes. And in exchange for that, uh, what the Southern candidate uh, Tilden wants um, is, uh, I mean, well, what Southerners uh, in Congress um, will, um, you know, decide to do in a backroom deal is they will uh, kind of force the North to drop Reconstruction. So we see formally um, the Northern military, the Northern, uh, you know, focus in Congress, all of that is going to pull out completely from Reconstruction. Uh, the federal government is going to look the other way at whatever the southern states do in terms of redeeming uh, their governments. And so the constitutions get rewritten again, this time with former Confederates at the helm, and the southern governments will fall into what lots of people will refer to as you know, the Jim Crow system. Jim Crow is a um, minstrel character that is seen 
is a derogatory crack character uh, for black Americans and the Jim Crow system will become one of, you know, outright segregation and a great deal of uh, social norms that are based on white supremacy and racism. So I uh, will talk about that more in class, but um, I'll see you all tomorrow. Okay. Be well.